What do you think you learned from Maitre Gillet that you would not have learned from any other fencing master? Are there any particular things? Well, the question is, <clears throat> what of those things can I tell you about? Well, I mean, <laughs> that's true. I would say that uh, what I learned that was unique to Jean Jacques. Uh, now, we had a different relationship than, than he had to his other students because we were both military veterans. And, uh, and the others weren't. Oh, uh, Bob Scranton uh, was, a, was a vet too. But that means we have certain common experiences that other people can't appreciate. Uh, you have to have done that and you have to have been there and been in that environment and that structure and, and seen the insanity of that to be able to appreciate it. And so a lot of, a lot of our chats um, would be about that, about that environment, and, and, and he would analogize from that to to what we were doing, and so on. Um, some of it was about motivation. You know, we talked about uh, when he was uh, when he was in the army. Uh, there was a fencing master, regimental fencing master, whatever his gig was, right? Um, see, being on the army fencing team was what in the military we called dick duty. I mean, it was easy. It was gravy. See, there's no, there's no humping rifles around in the boonies if you're on the fencing team. That's right. That's a nice gig. So there are about 30,000 guys ready to line up to want one of those three spots on the team. Right? So as the fencing master, Jean Chuck would say, okay, I think so. You should go run 20 miles. Boom. They do it. No questions. What else? Uh, lift weights uh, three times a week, boom, they do it. You know, jump on your head and spit nickels, boom, they do it. Right? Because they, they're highly motivated to win a spot on the team. But Ivy League students, you say, I think so, you should go run 20 miles. They say, why? I don't feel like it. What does that have to do with it? What, right? And you wind up having to over explain or justify everything. And it's, it's a drag, man. Compared to being able to walk in and say, okay, here's our training plan, go do it. Yes, sir, bam, and they do it. So it's a different relationship when the, when the people that you're training don't have to be there. You know, they've got other things to do, other places to go. You know, they're not in the army. So how do you, how do you hang on to those people? How do you motivate, how do you motivate those guys? How do you motivate those guys to go out and run the 20 miles? How do you do that? We had a lot of discussions about how to do that. And uh, how important it is to get to know your people and to establish this trust with them. It's not just that you get to know them. They have to get to know you because they have to trust you. So you have to reveal enough of yourself to win their trust. If they trust you, then if you say, yeah, I think so, you should go run 20 miles, they'll do it because they trust you. It's not because they have to do it. It's not because it's an order and they're in the army. It's because they trust that you are working for their benefit on their behalf. And if you say that, okay, if you say I should do that, I must have to do it because I know you're in my corner and you're doing this for me. So, so I'll do it. I believe that. And that's the relationship you have to have with your people. And if you don't have that, you don't have anything. If you don't have that, all the technical drills in the world ain't going to help you.